Who are the worst Money in the Bank briefcase winners of all time? You're about to find out. Fred Ricciani, TSC, your home for pro wrestling news, interviews, and everything in between. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. It's hard to believe Money in the Bank has been around since 2005, back when it debuted at WrestleMania 21. And it's hard to believe it's actually been a pay-per-view standalone since 2010. And there have been a lot of great Money in the Bank winners, but there have also been some duds. So let's not waste any time, and let's dive into the TSC Top 10 Worst Money in the Bank Briefcase Winners. Number 10, Alberto Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio won the briefcase in 2011 at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. He defeated Alex Riley, Jack Swagger, Evan Bourne, Kofi Kingston, The Miz, R-Truth, and Rey Mysterio, and held the briefcase for 28 days. Now, Alberto Del Rio, when he initially came into WWE, had a ton of momentum, beat Rey Mysterio his first night in, did his damn thing, won the Royal Rumble in 2011, and then he lost to Edge for the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 27, which actually turned out to be Edge's last singles match. And then he lost again to Christian at Extreme Rules. And from there, he was just kind of toiling and withering away and having these boring nothing matches, cutting these boring nothing promos up until Money in the Bank. Now, the Money in the Bank ladder match, much like a lot of the Money in the Bank ladder matches in history, was a damn spectacle and very entertaining. But... Alberto Del Rio just did not have the momentum he had back earlier in 2011. And by the time he cashed in on CM Punk following Cena versus CM Punk at SummerSlam 2011, the bloom was off the rose. CM Punk was clearly the top guy that people wanted to see. John Cena was the other top guy that people wanted to see. And you can make the argument that the top heel at the time was more or less either Triple H or Kevin Nash due to the fact that Triple H was feuding with Punk, and Kevin Nash was the one that cost CM Punk the championship, leading to Alberto Del Rio to cash in. And while WWE tried multiple times over the years with various world title runs and pushes and restarts to give Alberto Del Rio some momentum, he never regained the shine he once had when he initially came in. Which essentially tells us, when it comes to pro wrestling, timing is always everything. Number 9. Jack Swagger, WrestleMania 26, he won the Money in the Bank ladder match and he defeated Christian, Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler, Evan Bourne, Kofi Kingston, Kane, Matt Hardy, MVP, and Shawn Benjamin. How's that for a lineup? And the reason I would put Jack Swagger as one of the worst Money in the Bank winners of all time is because, well, he didn't really get a chance to hold it. He clearly wasn't ready at the time. He had been coming off of a, a decent ECW run as the ECW champion, but didn't do much after that. And then two days later, he held the, the briefcase for two days, and two days later at the SmackDown tapings, he cashed in his money in the bank, pinned the World Heavyweight Champion Chris Jericho to win the world title, and he went on to be one of the worst world champions of all time. Sure, nowadays, we're used to seeing world champions drop non-title matches like flies all the freaking time, and it's pretty bad if you ask me. But back then, other than Rey Mysterio's doomed 2006 world title run, it was pretty rare to see a champion lose non-title matches and lose regularly on TV. Unfortunately, that was the case for Jack Swagger. He clearly wasn't ready. He clearly was in over his head. WWE did him no favors. And when you look back and see the guys that they could have put the briefcase on, Christian, Dolph Ziggler, who would eventually get it, Drew McIntyre, Evan Bourne, who would eventually smoke his career away through uh, some synthetic weed, Can't, well, maybe not Kane, Kofi Kingston, Matt Hardy, MVP, or Shawn Benjamin, who arguably would have been a great winner at any point in time in the briefcase matches he competed in because he had those amazing spots, but... Jack Swagger, yeah, he was doomed from the start. His title reign was doomed from the start. And that's why he belongs on the list of worst Money in the Bank winners. Number eight, Carmella, Money in the Bank 2017. Carmella defeated Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Natalia, and Tamina in the first ever women's Money in the Bank ladder match. And the reason I have her on this list is, well, there's actually a few reasons, but the main one is how she won the briefcase. With the help of James Ellsworth, yes, a man, securing the briefcase, handing it to Carmella, who became the first ever Ms. Money in the Bank. Never mind the fact the match was not that good. And there was such major fan backlash that WWE decided, you know what? A couple of days later on SmackDown Live, we're going to do it again. And unfortunately, 
That other match wasn't all that great. It was better than Money in the Bank. But ultimately, Carmella once again got the win, becoming a two-time Ms. Money in the Bank winner. And she went on to not have that great of a run as Ms. Money in the Bank. Yes, she stepped up her promo ability. She created a, a, a more distinct character for herself. She got a lot of heat, but the matches weren't really good. She wasn't built up particularly well. By the time she cashed it in on Charlotte Flair after WrestleMania, it was a great moment. You know, the crowd popped huge. But looking back, Charlotte Flair broke the epic winning streak of Asuka at WrestleMania 34. Only to lose to Carmella, who went on to have a pretty bad run as women's champion. Yes, she was great on the mic. Yes, she's okay in the ring. But she was not at the main event level that fans got accustomed to when it came to women's title matches, whether it be with Becky Lynch or Charlotte Flair or Sasha Banks or Bailey. And I'm happy to say Carmella's doing a lot better now. In the ring, she's still got a long ways to go, but she's doing great with her dance breaks with our truth and, and being a, a babyface personality. But I personally don't think she was money in the bank material. Number seven, Alexa Bliss, Money in the Bank 2018. Alexa Bliss beat Becky Lynch, Ember Moon, Charlotte Flair, Lana, Naomi, Natalia, and Sasha Banks to win the women's briefcase. And later in the night, she would cash in during the Ronda Rousey Nia Jax match, which was actually a surprisingly good match, cashing in on Nia Jax to win the women's championship. Here's why Alexa Bliss is on this list. Nothing against her and everything. She's great on the mic. She's had some pretty good matches here and there. I do think in her career she has been overpushed when you look at Bailey and Sasha Banks and other women that are arguably more skilled bell to bell and, and more over with the crowd. And I, I just didn't feel like she needed the briefcase. If she was going to have a match with Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam, which she did and lost, you could have set it up by having her just beat Nia Jax in a random pay-per-view match or on a match on Raw. You didn't need to have her win the briefcase because you look at it right now. Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Ember Moon, Lana, Naomi, Natalia, Sasha Banks. You're telling me Becky, Sasha, and Naomi, Ember couldn't use that? I mean, seriously. Okay, let's take away the former champs in, in, in the four horsewomen. Ember Moon could have absolutely used that briefcase. It would have absolutely elevated her. Lana, let's, let's keep her on the sidelines. But you know, Natalia, she would have been pretty good too. But I, I think for me, the, the glaring result here is Alexa Bliss. I, th I think other than Lana... She was probably the worst choice here. And some people may balk at oh, Natalia. Why would you give the briefcase to Natalia? Well, at the time, they were doing a storyline where Natalia and Ronda are best friends and training partners and all that jazz. And it would have made perfect storyline sense for Natalia to win the briefcase, act all buddy-buddy with Ronda Rousey, maybe even have Ronda Rousey win the women's title from Nia Jax, and then have Natalia turn on her, setting up a major SummerSlam matchup. But ultimately... We didn't get that match on pay-per-view. We eventually got that match as a babyface versus babyface match, and it turned out pretty good, but I don't know. I, I, I just think Alexa Bliss was not the best choice. Number six, Kane, Money in the Bank pay-per-view 2010. Much like Alexa Bliss, I got nothing against Kane, okay? But it is Kane. It was Kane in 2010. And did he really need the Money in the Bank briefcase in order to capture that World Heavyweight Championship? Quite frankly, the answer is no. He defeated Big Show, Cody Rhodes, Christian, Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, Matt Hardy, and Kofi Kingston to capture the briefcase. And later that night, Kane would cash in that briefcase to pin Rey Mysterio following Mysterio's successful defense against Jack Swagger to win the World Heavyweight Championship. And while it was a great moment for Kane fans because he went on to have a legitimate world title run, the reality is this could have been accomplished without him winning the briefcase. If you haven't already noticed in this video, okay, in this series, I see the Money in the Bank briefcase as a title that can elevate wrestlers, that can put real momentum on them. And a guy like Kane, who had been with WWE since the mid-90s, did not need to have that briefcase. A guy like Christian could have used it, Cody Rhodes, McIntyre, Kingston, Ziggler, who eventually got the briefcase, Matt Hardy, any of those guys could have really used the briefcase. The only worst choice here out of this list well, really would have been the big show. Number five, Boren Baron Corbin, Money in the Bank 2017. Here's a guy who's been pushed quite a bit over the course of his WWE career. Has been in the WWE system, what, seven, eight, nine years now. And while I got nothing personal against Baron Corbin, 
He is the definition to a lot of people of just a guy. He's got a cool look. Well, he did have a cool look. He's got the tattoos and all that jazz. He checks some of the boxes, but the reality is when you stack him up against the greats as he was stacked up in this match, it just doesn't click. And you look at who he was stacked up against. AJ Styles, Dolph Ziggler, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Shinsuke Nakamura. And the choice that WWE made in 2017 was Baron Corbin. Now, I was willing to give Baron Corbin a chance because at the time he wasn't wrestling like a bartender at Applebee's. He was wrestling like a wrestler because he actually dressed like a wrestler. And he still had hair. And then, 58 days later, he cashed in his Money in the Bank briefcase, that contract against Jinder Mahal, the then WWE champion. Yes, Jinder Mahal was WWE champion, if you forgot. This was right before SummerSlam. And thanks to a distraction finish from John Cena... Baron Corbin was pinned immediately by Jinder Mahal. And Baron Corbin goes down in history as a failure when it comes to cashing in his money in the bank contract. Never mind the fact Baron Corbin's not a great wrestler. Never mind the fact it was a questionable choice to begin with. And WWE wonders why a lot of fans don't care for Baron Corbin. Whether you're a fan of the guy or not, it's okay if we disagree on him. Okay, Whether you're a fan of him or not, You could definitely make the argument that WWE has done him no favors. And currently dressing him as a Perkins waiter is also doing him no favors. Number four, John Cena. Yes, John freaking Cena is ranked above Baron Corbin for worst Money in the Bank winners of all time. Why? Well, because John Cena didn't really need the Money in the Bank briefcase in 2012. Well, he did have a damn good match with Big Show, Chris Jericho, Kane, and Miz to win the briefcase. So John Cena held the briefcase for a whopping eight days, cashing against then WWE champion CM Punk. And thanks to the Big Show interfering, John Cena failed at his cash-in. Yeah, that was brutal. And look, I'm all for guys failing to cash in. And John Cena at the time was the first man, I believe, to fail at cashing in when actually cashing in. But... This is kind of underwhelming, right? At least do it on a pay-per-view. You know, at least like put Punk and Cena on like in the middle of a pay-per-view or something and then have that interference or or what have you. Nope. Pictures comes in. Although, to be fair, it did set up a number of matches with CM Punk and John Cena and Big Show. Although, believe it or not, it wasn't John Cena who ended up dethroning CM Punk as WWE Champion. It was The Rock and John Cena would have to wait until WrestleMania 29 to finally recapture WWE Gold. But, in terms of Money in the Bank winners... He has a dubious place in history. Number three, Damian Sandow, Money in the Bank 2013. I was here live for this matchup in Philly. This was a hell of a Money in the Bank ladder match. And Damian Sandow, of all people, got the win over Cesaro, Cody Rhodes, Dean Ambrose, Fandango, who actually still had momentum at the time, Jack Swagger, and Wade Barrett. And it was a questionable choice at the time. But I said, hey, what the hell? Damian Sandow. They're going to push him now. Well, uh, he held the briefcase for 106 days, and I think he won maybe two matches after that. It was pretty freaking brutal. And he ended up cashing in in October of 2013, and he had an amazing match with John Cena, actually. A great, great match with John Cena, but ultimately he lost. And... Unlike John Cena, who had credibility when he won the Money in the Bank briefcase because he's, you know, freaking John Cena. A guy like Damian Sandow probably could have really used that world title win after a great match with Cena. But instead, he lost. He fell all the way down to the wayside. Eventually came back up as Mrs. Stunt Double. And then he was released by WWE. And other than a brief run in TNA, we haven't heard from him since. So, hey, at least we look back at the moments. It was a great moment when Damian Sandow won the briefcase. Not so great after that. Number two, Braun Strowman, 2018 Money in the Bank winner. Yeah, this might surprise some people, but I got Braun Strowman this freaking high for a number of reasons. First of all, if you look at the list of the guys that he beat, Bobby Roode, Finn Bauer, Kevin Owens, Rusev, Kofi Kingston, Samoa Joe with The Miz, you can make this strong argument a guy like Finn Bauer needed it more. Maybe Kevin Owens, Kofi Kingston, 
Samoa Joe, who's great and needed some momentum at the time. Maybe even The Miz. Braun Strowman, I think, just didn't need the briefcase because, well, he's Braun Strowman. He's big. He's tough. He breaks things. He should be able to get a title shot, no problem. But Deadly decided to give the monster among men the world's smallest briefcase. And he proceeded to cash it in almost exactly three months later at Hell in the Cell 2018 against Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. And guess what? He lost. Now, he didn't technically lose, okay? He, he didn't technically lose. He ended it in a no contest because Brock Lesnar came in, destroyed everybody in the Hell in a Cell, and for whatever reason, after 24 minutes, it was ruled that in a match with no disqualifications, no counters, no nothing, that a Hell in a Cell could end via no contest? Never mind the fact that Braun Strowman already failed multiple times, multiple times, to capture the Universal Championship. He failed at SummerSlam 2017. He failed at No Mercy 2017. He didn't come close uh, in 2018 up until Hell in a Cell. And when he finally gets that one-on-one -on -one shot, what happens? It's a no contest. So you might be thinking, oh, well, Braun Strowman eventually got that elusive title shot, right? Nope. Not really. He faced Brock Lesnar for the vacant title at Crown Jewel. Baron Corbin, who was serving as like the special announcer, enforcer, whatever, attacked Braun Strowman before the bell. Brock Lesnar absolutely demolished him, pinned him one, two, three, captured the universal title. And guess what? Braun Strowman never got another universal title shot. And I like Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman definitely deserved better. But like I've said before, timing is everything. And man, WWE missed its timing with Braun Strowman a long time ago. And number one, the worst Money in the Bank ladder match winner of all time, Mr. Kennedy, Ken Kennedy, a.k.a. Ken Anderson. Now, some people may say I'm being a little too harsh on Kenny here. And look, I was a fan of Ken Kennedy back in the day. I actually thought this match right here back in 2007 at WrestleMania 23 was fantastic. You should actually go out of your way to see it. CM Punk, Edge, Finley, Kennedy, Hardy, King Booker, Matt Hardy, and Randy Orton. And yeah, both Hardy boys were in this one right here. And this was a great match. It even included a spot where Kennedy slammed Hornswoggle off of a freaking ladder. If that's not cool, I don't know what is. Although maybe not for Hornswoggle. But ultimately, this was a doomed run as Mr. Money in the Bank. And the reason I put him up at the top of this list is really through no fault of his own, even though he did screw up later with his WWE career, whether it be lying about uh, using steroids or just rubbing people the wrong way backstage or injuring Randy Orton or whatever have you. Before all that, Ken Anderson, Ken Kennedy, was a rising star. WWE was ready to strap the rocket onto his back. He was planned, reportedly, to cash in on The Undertaker. But here's what happened. 36 days after he won the Money in the Bank briefcase, he lost the briefcase to Edge in an impromptu match on Monday Night Raw. You might be wondering, why the hell would they do that? Well, here's the reason why. Because Ken Anderson at the time had been diagnosed with a serious arm injury. But here's the thing. It turns out that Kennedy wasn't nearly as injured as people thought he was. So, it turns out WWE pulled the trigger way too soon. Oops. And instead, Edge became the first two-time Money in the Bank winner in history, cashed in on The Undertaker, cemented his legacy as the ultimate opportunist and Kennedy, well, never got close to a world title shot in the WWE. So, those are my top 10 Money in the Bank winners that are the worst of all time. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? If you enjoyed this video, please like. If you didn't, this like button's right there. But we'd appreciate you guys subscribing and enabling notifications for more updates like this. And until next time, everybody, as always, enjoy the matches and grab that briefcase at your own risk.